Hello everybody and welcome back. Happy New Year, happy 2018. I hope you guys are having a really great start to New Year so far. It's only January 2nd and I really feel like 2018 is off to a good start. I feel like I'm being very productive. I'm like cleaning, I'm organizing, just really getting my life together for 2018. So I'm sitting here in my living room and we are gonna be talking about my favorite most used makeup products from 2017. Now, even though I am very, very predictable and a lot of these products in here, you probably have already heard me talk about time and time again. There are also products that I'm gonna be talking about today that I really haven't spoken about that much here on my channel and I just use a lot off camera like in my everyday life so if you watch all of my videos you know all of my favorites there will still be some new products here for you to discover which is great please let me know by the way down below how many of my favorite products you were able to guess before I even said them I just I want to know also I would love to know if you guys would want to see me talk about some of my favorite lifestyle products from 2017 so basically everything else other than beauty I would really love to do one of those I think it would be fun but of course only if you guys want to see it so without further ado I'm already talking way too much we have so much shit to talk about today so let's just get right into it so I'm gonna go in the order of how I do my makeup so first starting off with primer I've got two primers that I've been using really consistently throughout the whole entire year. The first one is from First Aid Beauty and it is the Hello Fab Coconut Skin Smoothie Priming Moisturizer. Now I'm personally not the biggest fan of primers that smooth the skin or like fill in pores because on me they always pill which means that they will like almost ball up on the skin they will flake and it makes my foundation look even worse so the coconut skin smoothie priming moisturizers it's not necessarily going to make your foundation last longer but it will provide just a really beautiful base for your foundation to sit on because it is super moisturizing and what I love so much about this is that it goes with every single foundation that I pair it with there's nothing that reacts weirdly with this product which can sometimes happen with more silicone based primers it just works with absolutely everything and it's my go-to for every single day. So next up I have the Hourglass number 28 primer serum. Compared to the Coconut Skin Priming Moisturizer, this is very, very different. It is a serum. This is more of like an oilier primer. So if you have an oilier skin type, I would probably stay far, far away from this. But if you have normal to dry skin, this is such a beautiful, extremely, extremely moisturizing primer. Now I like to use this specifically with foundations that I find to be either too dry or too matte for my skin type. So for example, I love pairing this with the Fenty Beauty Foundation. On its own, that foundation will just like accentuate my dry patches, but I do really like the way it looks. However, when I apply it with the number 28 primer serum, I really find that it makes the foundation a little bit more natural looking and not quite as dry. Yes. So next let's move on to foundations and I have two foundations that I want to talk about today. You guys could probably guess both of these pretty easily if you've been around on my channel because I talk about one of them way too much. It is the It Cosmetics Your Skin Met Better CC Plus Color Correcting Full Coverage Cream. As you can see, <laughs> I need to get a new tube of this stuff because this is my all-time favorite holy grail foundation. This will forever, forever be a favorite of mine. I don't see me ever not liking this product. Now, I was watching a Raw Beauty Christie's 2017 favorites video and she also mentioned this product as one of her favorites and she said that the tagline of this product, which is your skin but better, just describes it perfectly and I totally, totally agree with her. This product really just does make your skin look like your skin but better. It is not heavy in the slightest. It gives the skin such a beautiful, natural looking, dewy finish, especially if you have dry skin. Oh my God, you will love this. Don't let the CC in the name like scare you off because you may think it has more of like a lighter coverage. It is definitely, definitely medium, even medium full, but it will never look like makeup-y or cakey on the face. It is just the most beautiful, angelic foundation that I've ever tried in my life. I recommend it to literally every single person who ever asked me for a foundation recommendation. Christy in her video also mentioned the one downside to this product is the shade range. The shade range really does suck. I really hope that in 2018 or sometime soon, It Cosmetics expands the shade range for this foundation because that will just make it even better. Next up is a product that I rediscovered only within the last few months of 2017, but I still have to mention it because it's a product that I have not been able to stop using and I discovered it because of Alana Davison in our makeup swap video that we did. She had the MAC face and body foundation in her makeup bag and I was able to use it. And since filming that video, I have bought myself my own. The product itself is so lightweight, you can't detect it on your skin like whatsoever when you wear it. And it has a very, very natural finish. It's definitely not too dewy. It's not matte at all. It's just very natural. It literally looks like 
again it's your skin but better and just like slightly more perfected it works honestly perfect for me especially for every day because I don't really ever feel like I want a super full coverage on an everyday basis that's just my personal makeup preferences next moving on to my concealers I've got three that I wanted to mention to you guys so the first concealer is one that I really haven't heard anybody talk about it's really weird I feel like it's a very very underrated product it's this product called the Tarte Shape Tape not really sure why nobody talks about it because it's so good. I'm obviously kidding. This is the most hyped up, most talked about concealer in 2017. I believe I also even mentioned this as a favorite in 2016. So this has been around for a while. I'm sure you guys are probably sick of hearing about it and you know the drill with it. I love it because it's full coverage, only needs such a small amount to get a very big impact. Um, I also like that I don't have to set it and it doesn't crease underneath my eyes and it just does everything I would want a concealer to do. Next up is a product that I really feel like I haven't spoken too much about on my channel, but I've been using a ton off camera, and that is the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer, and I have the shade Light 2.5 Creme Brulee. This is another product that I bought because of Alana Davison. Alana and I really have very similar makeup preferences, so whenever she does recommend a product to me, I always go out and buy it in like nine times out of 10, I usually adore the product just as much as she does. And there were so many times that I brought this product to the Sephora cash register and almost bought it, but didn't because it is a really pricey concealer. And also the fact that it says that it is a matte concealer just scared me a little bit. So I never picked it up until Alana would not stop raving about it. So then I did. And once again, Alana just came through with the bomb makeup recommendations. And I love this concealer to death. If you were like me and you were a little bit off put by the fact that this concealer has matte in the title, don't be. This is not a drying concealer in the slightest. The fact that it isn't like a super dewy and emollient formula really works for this product because I find that I don't actually have to set it with powder and it will stay throughout the whole entire day. And I really love the shade of this. It is, like I said, like 2.5 creme brulee. It has a slight peachy undertone and because it is a little bit peachy, but not too peachy. I find that it really does color correct underneath my eyes really nicely and really brightens and just cancels out all those dark circles. The last concealer is another product that I talk about nonstop on my channel and this is the Bare Minerals Bare Skin Complete Coverage Serum Concealer. This is one of my favorite more everyday concealers and I usually do prefer to use more light coverage concealers on an everyday basis just because I don't like the look of a very, very stark under eye when the rest of my face is very natural looking. So this is always the one that I like to go to. And because it is more of a serum concealer, it's very hydrating. It makes your under eyes literally look dewy. So beautiful. So next let's talk about powders. Now powders are something that I'm really, really picky about. I'm always looking for a powder that just sets the makeup and doesn't even look like it's there. I want it to do what it has to do and then disappear. There's only so much you could say about a powder, so I'm really just gonna go through them pretty quickly. Just know that all these powders really do do that for me. They will set my makeup, but they will never look heavy on my skin. First one is the Cover Effects Illuminating Setting Powder. This has been in my collection for a really long time. If I am ever gonna bake, this is the powder that I always like to go to. Next is the little powder trio that I don't even really think I've ever mentioned on my channel. Since getting this, I believe it was in June or July, I've been using this almost every single day to set my under eyes, and this is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette. Now this is a little custom palette that I got made at the Hourglass store, but all these powders you can buy separately. So you have Ethereal Light, Mood Light, and Diffuse Light. And I use a mix of Ethereal Light and Diffuse Light, which is the white powder and the yellow base powder. I always mix them together and I will use that to set underneath my eyes. If you're not familiar with Hourglass powders, they're honestly some of the most beautiful powders out there on the market. They are so finely milled and these two shades mixed together just brighten up the under eyes so nicely, but also so subtly. It's not super stark. And almost all hourglass powders have like a little bit of a sheen to them. They're not completely matte. And I really love that about them because it doesn't completely mattify the skin. These are the last two powders that I want to mention. This is my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Skin Perfecting Micro Powder, as well as my Lila B B Natural Flawless Finish Foundation. I sort of wanted to mention them together because I really find them to be pretty similar to one another. I find that they really do like blur pores. They will almost give the illusion of like smoother skin and they just make your face look velvety, velvety smooth. Next up, let's talk about bronzers. Now my number one favorite bronzer makes me very upset. It was limited edition. I'm pretty much 100% sure it's not available anymore. I am praying that they come back with it because I don't think I will be able to live my makeup life without this product in it. And it is the Marc Jacobs Tantastic Omega 
bronzer. This is by far probably one of my most used products throughout the whole entire year. I am confused as to how I have not hit pan on this. I literally use this almost every single day and I pile this on my face. So I don't know how this has not like even dented slightly, but it hasn't. Maybe it's because it's such a huge compact. So this was um, part of the Marc Jacobs summer collection, I believe, and it is just the most perfect shade. It's completely matte. This is also my favorite bronzer to travel with because it has this giant mirror. And I actually heard from one of you guys that they were planning on bringing this product back. And I really hope you're not trying to break my heart here because I take that very seriously and I really hope that they are actually bringing it back. I would be so happy and I would literally buy like 30 of them. Now this Lila B B Sunkissed Bronze Beauty little duo bronzer has been another one of my favorites. This I really only did discover within the last few months. I think it was November that I bought this. So it's very, very new in my collection, sort of cheating a little bit. I actually find the color to be very similar to the Marc Jacobs one, which is why I think I love it so much. The only difference is that this bronzer has a little bit of a sheen and the packaging is to die for. Now my favorite glowy bronzer of the year has definitely been the Becca Sunlit Bronzer in Capri Coast. I actually discovered this because one of you guys recommended it to me in testing my subscriber's favorite makeup, I believe. I think it was the first one that I did. It just gives the skin a beautiful beautiful sheen and glow never looks like muddy patchy anything you don't want a bronzer to look like it's just a really nice one so now you guys know that I have a soft spot in my heart for cream products I love cream products especially on an everyday basis I just love how natural they make the skin look and these two cream bronzers have definitely been my favorites this year this one is the milk makeup big bronzer and this one over here is the nude sticks Bondi Bay sometimes cream products can get a bad rap because they could be difficult to work with, difficult to blend. They could be a little bit finicky. These, however, I've never had any issues with blending them. They melt into the skin with a few taps of a beauty blender. Let's talk highlighters. I have three here. The first one is this Cover FX Moonlight Pressed Highlighter. This has been the highlight that I've really consistently been using throughout the whole entire year. This is a very versatile highlighter. I find that I'm able to get a very natural looking glow with this, or I could build it up to get something that's pretty intense and pretty reflective, but it will never look overly metallic or unflattering on the skin. It will always just look like you are naturally glowing, even if it is really, really intense. They do have a few different shades. Moonlight is the one that I have and it works really well with my particular skin tone. This is definitely cheating because I only discovered this like two weeks ago, I think. This is the Pop Beauty Prismatic Pop Gilded Light Powder Highlighter. It's probably one of the most beautiful powder highlighters I think I've ever tried. Pop Beauty is an affordable brand, so that makes it even that much better. My go-to cream highlighter throughout the year has been this Marc Jacobs Spotlight Glow Stick. It looks like a little mini deodorant. This is a beautiful, more natural looking highlighter. Cream highlighters in general are really pretty on like your more natural, no makeup makeup days. If you want something that literally just looks like you are naturally glowing, this is going to do that for you. It gives your skin that glossy look that I love. So I really wanted to put a spotlight on the Makeup Forever, what are they called? Like the artist powders, I think. But Makeup Forever basically came out with a ton of different blush shades, contour shades, powder shades, highlight shades, but I really wanted to like put a spotlight on the blush shades in particular. So they are sold individually and then you could customize your own palettes. The formulas are gorgeous. The mattes apply like butter. The shades that have more of like a shimmery, like finish to them, have zero like chunks in them whatsoever. They really just give your cheeks a really pretty sheen. And just overall, I think the formula itself and just the color selection that you get in this range is really awesome and totally worth checking out. My favorite everyday blush of the year has definitely been Tarte Risqué. This is a really beautiful, just soft pink, matte blush, really simple, especially when I've been traveling, this has been the blush that I've been grabbing just because I feel like it does go with almost every single look because it is such a beautiful and just simple blush. Lastly, I wanted to give a mention to the MAC blush in the shade Modern Mandarin. I believe this is another product that I discovered from one of your recommendations from the testing my subscribers favorite makeup video. It really turned me on to orange blushes. I think that orange blushes are so beautiful and underrated, especially when you are a little bit more tan. It just gives such a pretty and unique flush to the cheeks. But I feel like it's still a, a pretty wearable orange and it is also matte. It's just such a pretty color and very unique. Alrighty, so now let's move on to eyes. Now the one eyeshadow palette that really stole my heart this year was definitely the Tarte Clay Play Palette. This is another product that I have recommended to so many people in my like personal everyday life. I don't know what it is about this palette that made me love it so much. I think it's just the fact that all the shades in here I really use equally. You know those eyeshadow palettes that are still really beautiful, but you only use like three quarters of the shades or half of the palette. 
This palette I really use every single color in here. It has all the staples that I need and the Tarte eyeshadows, I mean as per usual, work so well. I find the shades in here are also just very versatile as well. This cool tone brown shade I've used in my brows. I've also used to fill in my hairline. So yes, this has definitely been my most used, most loved eyeshadow palette of 2017. There's no doubt about it. Now I did also want to mention these Huda Beauty Obsessions palettes. They are basically little mini eyeshadow palettes that contain nine eyeshadows in this cute little compact little palette and this one in particular this is the smoky obsessions has again all the eyeshadows that i need on an everyday basis it has some great browns transition shade a beautiful really rich very intense black and some really beautiful lid shades the shade right over here the champagne i wear all the time all over my lid and i always get somebody asking me what i'm wearing on my lid because it's so reflective and metallic and i just think that these are really great to travel with as well because they're so compact the natasha and denona crystal top coats are definitely another one of my favorites this year so these are basically like potted metallic eyeshadows that act as top coats So you could either apply them on top of any eyeshadow look or you could wear them by themselves They're a little bit more sparse So they just add like the most pretty like wash of sparkle across the lid and my favorite mascara of the year Everybody say it with me the Maybelline lash sensational tied with the a cosmetic CC cream This is probably one of my most mentioned products here on my channel. It gives my lashes volume length beauty grace need I say more it's the best. I'm not going to go on and on about it. You guys know the drill with this. Now for my brows this year, I have been loving the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil. This is an ultra fine brow defining pencil and I use the shade number four, which matches my brows perfectly. There's really not much to say about this because it is just an eyebrow pencil, but I just really love how fine and tiny this little pencil is. I'm really able to create a very natural looking brow look. It works well, lasts well. That's it. Oh, I almost forgot to talk about the Nude Sticks Magnetic Matte Eye Colors. They are basically jumbo eyeshadow sticks, and I loved using these throughout the year for really quick eyeshadow looks. I would literally just draw this on my eye, take a blending brush, blend them out, and that is it. And once these set down on your eyes, they are locked and loaded. They will not move. You do not need an extra primer underneath them, which makes them just a very, very easy eye product to use. They also work really well as an eyeshadow base. Just overall, I think, a really awesome product. And my favorite shades are Fig, Para, Taupe. Those are my faves. We have made it to the final category, which is good because my voice is slowly but surely dying here. I have a ton of lip products though to talk about. All I did was I went through my handbags and I pulled out the products that I always throw in them because the products that I take with me outside of the house are the products that I definitely definitely love and use the most. So as for gloss, I have two glosses here that have been my number ones this year. The first one is from Jouer. This is the High Pigment Lip Gloss in PCH. Because this is more of like a pigmented gloss, I am able to wear it either on its own or I can layer it on top of another nude lipstick. And I find that I am able to pair it with just so many different lip colors. It's sort of just that perfect pinky nude and it's not too light so it is still very wearable to wear on its own. It doesn't like wash me out. It's such a nice gloss. Another one of my favorites has definitely been the Fenty Beauty Gloss Balm. When I first bought this, I really didn't think it would be anything special. I didn't even think I would like it because I thought that it would be a little bit too dark for my preferences. I typically like lighter glosses, but there is something so flattering about this lip gloss and it literally does look good on every single person. I even got my mom into this and she wears it all the time. Makes your lips look very, very juicy. A++. Next is the color that I'm wearing on my lips right now. This is a lipstick that I don't think I've ever even mentioned on my channel, which is sort of a crime because it's one of my favorite new lipsticks. This is actually a new tube of it that I got. It is the shade 655 Daringly Nude from Maybelline. It's one of their matte formulas. Now this is what I would consider to be the most perfect nude lipstick because it's not too light, it's not too dark, so it sort of sits right in the middle where it's still a light nude but it doesn't wash me out. It's also nude that I don't feel like I have to wear with a lip liner which is so great because I could just throw this on and not really have to worry about actually defining my lips. So it's just a very easy lip product to wear and the Maybelline mattes are actually one of my favorite formulas just in general not even just from the drugstore. They're not drying at all but they still give you that really pretty matte finish. So Daringly Nude from Maybelline is one that I really feel like everybody should check out. These two jumbo lip pencils are another one of my most used. This one over here is from Nude Sticks and it is the lip and cheek pencil in the shade Whisper. It's just a really pretty nude pink and this one from By Beauty in the shade Madeira. Madeira, not really sure how to say it. It's actually a very, very similar color. It's another nude pink. They're just really easy to throw on. Now, as you could probably tell, I really like a good pinky base nude, but neutral nudes are also ones that I do like to dabble in. And this one from MAC called Honey Love is one of my favorites. And then 
then I have my go-to lip liner, which is another recommendation from Alana Davison. This is the Makeup Forever Aqua Lip in 3C. I've been a huge fan of the Aqua Lip from Makeup Forever for a really long time because they're super creamy, very long wearing, but I never tried 3C and 3C is like the most perfect lip liner color, especially if you like to wear a lot of nude lip colors because I feel like it's sort of like works with every single undertone whether it's more pink neutral brown it doesn't matter this lip liner really does go with everything lastly i wanted to talk about the long comb matte shakers not even just this color in particular just in general i've said this a lot but i really think the matte shakers are great if you like liquid lipsticks like the look of liquid lipsticks but you don't like the way liquid lipsticks feel because the matte shakers are matte obviously but they feel like nothing on the lips they're just such a great formula very unique and very different my voice is so done right now you guys i feel like i need a huge mug of hot tea or something because <clears throat> I've been talking for the last hour and a half. Yep. I really hope that you guys enjoyed listening to all of my favorites from 2017. Once again, let me know if you'd like to see me do a lifestyle version of this. Don't forget to let me know your most favorite product from last year. I would love to hear what you guys have to say. Of course, give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.